What's good, Denver? It's Shelly Martinez, your host of Chopping It Up with Shelly at Hollywood Barbershop. This is the Barbershop. Black man means so. What's good, Denver? It's Chopping Up with Shelly over here at Hollywood Barbershop. And I have Nikki here with us in the house today. Before there was Shelly Martinez here at Hollywood, there was Nikki. Yes. Nikki, um, what you been doing with your life since uh, Hollywood? Well, I definitely have been improving in life, uh, improving on life and living. And um, still giving my best to people, helping people. That's that's my nature. That's so. good. So let's let's um go back to where it started. So um, how old were you when you got out of barber school? Ooh, um, I was seventeen, turning eighteen, mm -hmm. when I graduated, uh, Emily Griffith. Okay. And uh, Mike had come in, owner of Hollywoods, came in uh, to our class one day and um, offered us to do internship. Wow. And. I didn't know what that was at first, um, but after he left, the teacher explained it to us a little bit better. He also, at that time, offered for us to come and take a field trip mm. to come to his shop, which used to be in the middle of the block on a Josephine and Koufax. And so um, we took that field trip. We came down. You know, it was small. It was, it was a small little box shop, but uh, we were able to look around, talk to him, ask him questions. And uh, he gave each and every one of us a card and said, you know, if you decide that this is really what you want to do, uh, please feel free to give me a call and I'll give you a spot. And at the time, it was about roughly five women, mm. maybe six in the class um, that we were all around the same age for the most part. Um, but only myself was interested mm. in actually becoming a lady barber. Okay. Um, so I took him up on his offer, called him, he gave me a spot. I was in that spot for 10 years. Wow, yours, yours seemed like it went a little <laughs> bit easier than mine. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I had to beg and bleed. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, but it was, it was, was smooth. Cool. I didn't expect it to be that smooth. I didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know anything about barbering. Um, I was nervous. I was scared. Oh, barbershop. Mm -hmm. Actual men there, actual haircutting. In school, you get a mess up, and only your friends or people in the class get to see that and make yeah. fun of you. But now you're going to be in the real world making real money. And got to be a little more careful. Mm -hmm. So um, I give it up to the guys for really helping me hone in on my craft. Wow. And, um I love it. Yeah. I love so um, do you feel like it was really intimidating being uh, the only female in here? And how many guys did you work with at the time? Ooh, so it was six guys and one me. Mm -hmm. um, before me, there were some ladies um, that also helped. One of my favorite was Sherry. She mm -hmm. was an older lady. And uh, she really helped me understand the money, understand the customers um, as far as, you know, um, etiquette. Um, and then they all kind of left, uh, I want to say, a few months after I got here. Um, but then, and then at that time, it was just me and the, the six guys. And we easily became brothers and sisters, you know, brother and si brothers and sister. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be mm -hmm. to be around men. Um, they don't make you feel like crap if you mess up. They just tell you how to fix it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I, I found that to be comforting. I, I found um, that like when working with men versus working with women, I felt like through my experience, and I've been you know in the hair industry for over 30 some years, okay. um, but a barber for seven of those years okay. or going on seven. But um, working with women, I felt like it was very cliquish very yeah. like kind of catty and then they would throw you under the bus any yes. chance they get now like with men my experience in here it's like they tell you exactly how it is you know exactly where you stand with them and they keep it 100 with you mm -hmm. and um 
I, I prefer that. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> to be straight up with me, yeah. you know, instead of, at least I know who my friends are in yep. here. And every single one of the guys that, as you know, that we work with have, they're our best friends yeah. and our brothers. So yeah. The honesty helped. Mm -hmm. um, very straightforward. Mm -hmm. And they weren't raising no punks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I that, dare somebody yes. to mess with me now that I've been yes. in here. Yes, uh -huh. that was my favorite part. Um, I've always wanted brothers. Mm -hmm. Always. Like, mom, dad, what's up? Why I didn't do this right? Mm -hmm. um, coming in here at that age, I was very young, very tender. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. They, they, they made me feel at home. I didn't feel like I had walked into a den of just hungry mm -hmm. uh, sexual men mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at that age. Of course, I really didn't know what that felt like, but I didn't feel that. I didn't feel like I was ever taken advantage of. I didn't feel like I was looked at as a piece of, you know, meat or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I was very, I'm very attractive and I know that. And I own that. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, that's what really kept me paid. Mm -hmm. um, I love my, um, one of the things they really fo help, helped us focus on in barbering was your personal appearance. You are your advertisement, your mm -hmm. best advertisement. They told the wrong person that. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I just took it and ran with it. Mm -hmm. um, I would I, I kept my my femininity mm -hmm. intact completely intact um, I was a mother a young mother at the time when I started this when I started here mm -hmm. um, of two boys um, so you know I had a lot of masculinity around you just around me um, they helped me in that area as well they were brothers to my boys role models and, role models and you know, help me understand how to deal with them because, you know, their dad, their fathers were absent, you know. So, man, they helped grow me up. Was your father absent with you? No. Mm -hmm. no. I had, they I got had to a, meet my dad. Did they? Yes. I had a, I have a stepdad, but my father died when I was 10. So, oh, okay. um, you. thank you. Um, being in their presence, mm -hmm. I mean, even it definitely they, fills that void. Yeah, or it does. Don't. It does. I mean, they, yeah. they've, you know the father daughter talks mm -hmm. and and things like that i you know i've learned it from them yeah. you know and um, and me and my stepdad too but um i'm around these guys so much that they've they've really like you say filled that gap for me mm -hmm. you know so i mean if i ever had children this would be the place i would raise yeah. them as well just because and, and of they them. allowed it mm -hmm. you know it wasn't uh, uh don't be bringing them loud kids in here crying don't be no, I had a place to work and a place to bring my children to do their homework after school. I didn't have to pay for child care, wow. you know, from time to time. But most of the time, my kids grew up, in each and every one of them mm. grew up in the barbershop, even my daughter. Mm. I have three boys, one girl. They grew up in the barbershop mm. with mom working, you know, and that's what they know. Um, the guys really put in on my life and I could never repay them. But other than being a good woman and when I come and visit them, because I make sure I do that at least once a year, once mm -hmm. or twice a year. I, I've stayed in contact since I left. Um, and I always remind them, like, look what you raised, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, how, how long were you actually here with them? Ten years. Ten years. Yep. That's a long Straight. Time. Mm -hmm. Straight out of school. Wow. <laughs> so they, they watched you grow up. Yes, they did. Yep. Yes, did you, did. Um, were, were, did you like, with me, I'm, I'm close, like... I love all my brothers here and stuff like that, but I'm a lot closer with X and, and Jerry. Okay. And I, you know, like, I don't know if it's because our astrological signs are, so I don't things, know what it is. A lot is, of things play but, a part um, in But they're, they're my closest brothers, you okay. know? And then of course, you know, the trickles on down and then, uh, but I'm close with everyone and I have a, a unique relationship with every single one mm -hmm. and it is special, mm -hmm. you know? But um, those are the two, those are my two rocks okay. in here. Who were yours? Mike, definitely. Mm -hmm. And X. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, we have to keep in mind, uh, you weren't the only young one in the group. You know what right. I mean? Like, right. they were all in their younger years yeah. also growing yes. and learning. And we you guys learned from yeah, each other. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's it. Now, see, I got the good stuff because yes. everybody's mature. <laughs> Nobody's got too many issues. Yeah. It's yeah. easy, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I, I will say that let's talk about how these men have impacted our lives. Okay. You know, like with Mike... Um, 
Mike gave me a chance when I came in here and um, I, I, I can never repay him for the things that he's done for me. And it's just, just allowing me to work here, allowing me to be creative and to even move forward with this, this podcast. Nice. I mean, just the, the reward of being able to, to help others. And um, I mean, he's he's changed my life so much. I mean, I like basically saved my life, you know? That's awesome. And um, there's so many different components as in my life that, that these men have, 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 have changed for me in a positive mm -hmm. way, you know, mm -hmm. like my relationships with other men. Yeah. You know, they, they help me, um, you know, how to, how to be a strong woman in those relationships, how to look out for guys that don't have good intentions, yeah. you know, um, they hold me accountable, and I don't know if if, uh, if they've ever told you this, and I'm sure they have. Very, very like and, very and what protective. I mean, protective is very what I mean. Very protective. Very protective, and um, like X came up here one day, you know, and he's like, "No, you, you know, we all go through stuff, right? Yeah. With with in our relationships, and he told me, he says, uh, "No, you better you better be careful who you who you uh, you know date and stuff like that." He says because uh, if he put his hands on you. It take one of us to say go, and we all going yeah. to fuck him up. So yeah. be safe. Right. You know what I mean? Like it, we out of here. You can't stop us. And I'm like, oh right. shit. <laughs> one time I was crying, uh, you know, over a situation with uh, somebody I was talking to, and I happened to uh, roll up right here to the stoplight mm -hmm. for a second, and um, I got stuck there at the stoplight, and I'm, <laughs> you know, I look over, and Mike's right there getting in his car. He goes. Roll the window down, and oh, I go, no. "Oh my!" Lord. You know, <laughs> what do you do? I go, yeah. "Nothing. He didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I got something in my heart. Right, right. You know, but um, it it makes me hold myself accountable yes. because I know that I I don't want them to be in a in a position to where they have to stick up for me. So I have to make proper decisions, you know, yeah. with the the people I surround myself with because. I would never want to put them in any any kind part, of compromising yeah. situation. And that's the other thing, like here in the shop, like when you, like I work up here, as you did, I'm sure, mm -hmm. when, when you guys eventually came to this yeah. corner, right? Um, you got to hold your own in here. Yeah. You, you know, better. because they, I mean, they'll come to your you rescue. Yeah. But you don't want that to happen all the time right. or ever. You right. know, like I've had to deal with some, some you know, rude customers maybe two, maybe three mm -hmm. out of a million, yeah. and I'll take those odds any yeah. day. But I had to hold my own. But I knew that my brothers would come. Yeah. If I said one yeah. thing, they would yeah. brush their ass out yeah. of here, you know? Um, but, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's helped me be like a very strong person, yeah. you know? And there's we all have like little weaknesses and, and things within ourselves that we have to fix, you yeah. know, it, within ourselves. Um, certain things will allow what we won't allow and mm -hmm. that's where self-love comes yeah but I'll tell you what I didn't know what self-love was until I stepped into this barbershop and they started to teach me yeah you know and that's one thing I'm so grateful for because um, you know I come from a broken home okay I you know my father committed suicide and oh, all that sure. stuff so I mean to have these types of strong men that yeah. build us up mm -hmm. they support us mm -hmm. they love us mm -hmm. I mean they will watch someone bleed to death for us yeah. <laughs> I mean yeah. where is that yeah. at you yeah. know what I mean and we find it in these guys it's definitely I, 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 I could not I don't, I don't know what I would do without any of them yeah. you know so tell me uh, how do you think they've in, have they impacted you in the same way they've definitely impacted me my life um, I am a very strong, uh, very um, strong-willed, very self-motivated woman. Um, starting at the age I started, you know, that's a tender age for women. Mm -hmm. um, and I was also a mother, so it was like, um, so how are we gonna do this? Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't play with it. They, we joked, we laughed, and oh my gosh, it's the best. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it's just. This is home for me. Mm -hmm. um, but when it came time to growing up, I helped them see that woman's point of view. Mm -hmm. They helped me see that man's point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and we were receptive to each other with that, respectful to each other with that, mm -hmm. um, empathetic to each other with that. Um, when it came to my clients, they definitely made sure everything was good and they would ask, you good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we all right, you know. Um, they definitely encourage uh, client rapport mm -hmm. because 
they're not going to take care of your clients for you. Um, if your clients have questions, if they can't answer, they will, but they're like, no, they're going to direct them to you. Mm -hmm. um, you are the owner of you. Mm -hmm. You need to manage you. And they're there to help. And they made that known still to this day. Mm -hmm. We're here to help. Mm -hmm. um, and just to, to see them and to see us all blossom how we have, um, aging well, healthy, you know, still around, mm -hmm. not falling off into what the world has been having to offer. Um, it's been very rich mm -hmm. in, in the intangible things that, um, that I gained from working in this particular barbershop with these particular beautiful black men. Mm -hmm. um, they allowed me to be a beautiful black woman, to, be, to, to own that and to, and to feel comfortable and secure. And that um, when it came to dating, they know a couple of my knuckleheads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't like them. Mm -hmm. They didn't like, um, why you let them treat you like that? Same here. Do we need mm -hmm. to say something to them? Exactly. You know, they're not allowed to come up here. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was something, you know, if they if they saw that I wasn't being treated fairly. Mm -hmm. Yep. I had Jason. Uh, one time I uh, pulled up uh, during COVID when we were shut down, I was seeing somebody in... Um, uh, it was Jason's birthday and you know how we are with birthdays in yeah. there, you know, we always make sure we do a yeah. little something and uh, since the shop was shut down, I uh, made it over to Jason's house and took him a little gift or whatever and uh, you know, I'm just trying to catch up with Jason and we're sitting in the in the car and stuff and, and Jason's standing outside and he said, he, he just stops talking to me after, you know, in midway in the conversation mm -hmm. and he looks at the dude that I'm with and he's like, you know, she's our sister, right? And he's like, yeah, and he goes, if you don't know how to treat her right. You better just get this debit. I know that's <laughs> right. Like, because she's yes. she ain't replaceable, but yes. you are. And right. I was like, damn. Right. <laughs> I was like, okay. And meant it. Uh -huh. They're they're very founded in who they are. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm sure this goes with you too. But he also said it told the dude. Um, he says, you know, it, Shelly's a, a you know, you don't find them like Shelly. You know, right. she she right. she hold thirteen you know of us down yeah. year in and year out. And you don't find women that can hold their yeah. men down like that, yeah. you know, and, and that's who we are. So that leads me to, to ask you, um, how many hats did you wear in here? Ooh. <laughs> All of them. Mm -hmm. uh, cleaning up, um, cooking, mm -hmm. making sure they eat and going mm -hmm. to grab lunch, mm -hmm. whatever we're doing. Um, advice, mm -hmm. um, health, Nurse. whatever we on. Yeah, the, you know. <laughs> Because when you when you think about the barber pole, when you think about the barber pole, we all wear that hat. Um, a lot of people don't know exactly what the barber pole is, um, and it, it represents um, health. It represents life. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Barbers used to be surgeons. Mm -hmm. We could do surgery. We could perform surgery. Mm -hmm. um, over the years, that changed. Um, the, the white is the bandages, the blue is the oxygen, the red is the blood. That's what we were, that's mm -hmm. what we are. And when you understand that and you understand your position, it doesn't matter how many hats you wore. Mm -hmm. You just showed up, you know, and you were there and you didn't think twice about it. Mm -hmm. But the culture, the environment that you're in has to help nurture that and help you produce that. And that's what they did. It wasn't that they were doing something special. They were being them, who they are, but they invited and allowed and accepted who we are mm -hmm. as women. And, you know, you never knew what they were lacking or what they needed that day, that week, that month. But they give you a little, you know, little look or little, you know, anything, mm -hmm. you know, to let you know, like, hey, I need you. And you just have to figure out kind of where they need you at. Mm -hmm never overstepping your boundaries we mm -hmm. never overstep boundaries mm -hmm. so just a lot of respect and and you know even just coming into the barbershop it could be loaded in here with men like just a community mm -hmm. you know men in the community uh, aside from our brothers that work in here and I've never been disrespected never you know I mean one you've one been asked on one a lot time. of dates though I'm sure yeah can I take you out after this cut and that I, oh <laughs> I'm gonna tell you okay I have a secret to tell okay you. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> I shouldn't tell nobody. You shouldn't tell. At least but one person. I'll say, you know, oh, I'm, I'm seeing somebody, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, or I got two or three on the line, right? Mm -hmm. 
God, Jesus, and all these things. See, see. <laughs> I'm dating myself right now. <laughs> right. But you know, like men really do. You know, like look, there's been times where maybe Mike will have um, a guy in his chair, and he'll say, "Shelly, come down here," and I'll go down there, and he's like, "A boy want to talk to you." So I will say, um, "We'll tell you." And I, I know, <laughs> and I would tell Mike, "We'll tell your boy." To come up and talk to me uh, because I don't do shy brother, right, you know. Right. So then the guy will come up here, and mm -hmm. even if I'm not interested, I'll, I'll commend him on oh, being yeah. so brave to come up here. And oh, that, yeah. you know, I always say, "Close mouth, don't get fed." That and I'm, I admire you, and I give him a hug. And mm -hmm. every time he comes in, be like, "Hey, how yeah. are you? You know, good to mm -hmm. see you." Know, and they, I never make him feel bad mm -hmm. because not everybody's for everybody, That's and it. it don't mean anything personal. It just means. Well, and you not know? everything is about a relationship, no. not an intimate relationship. And I, I'm so grateful, you know, I'm so flattered that they even took the time Girl, to acknowledge yes. me or to say, yes. you know, but, but I mean, they, you know, uh, one of our, one of uh, the guys that you, you never had a chance to meet, his name was Rob, and maybe you did meet Rob mm -hmm. here at one time, but um, he's with Bob, uh, John John down the street at, okay. at, the, at that Sauce Money Barbershop, okay. but um he told me one time, he goes, I ain't never seen a, a woman get acid, uh, turned down so many men, you know, yeah. so much. He goes, it you should get the thighs, the, the Joe Theismann <laughs> trophy, because I'm like, nope. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, I mean, like, I have dated a few people out of here, you know, okay. but um, clients and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But, um, you know, it's 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 hard. Like, I work a lot. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not always at the clubs. Yeah, I don't, you yeah. Know? This so, is, I mean, this is, I feel like you it's, know? it's almost... It's almost respectful. You respect my mm -hmm. hustle. This is a hustle. Mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely a profession, one that you can have forever. But it's a hustle because you got to get up. You got to go make that money. And when they come in and they see that, mm -hmm. they have to respect that. Mm -hmm. This is where I'm at. So you know where I'm at. This is where you meet me at. And if something happens, it happens. If it doesn't understand and respect that, still come get your money. Mm -hmm. But you can't be jealous. Oh. Because I ain't leaving. Right, you know what so I mean. It's, so it's yeah. like a stripper, if you uh -huh. will. You're don't meet me in the strip club right. and then expect me to stop stripping just because right. I'm with you. If it's my choice, then mm -hmm. I will. Mm -hmm. um, I had so many relationships where guys were jealous mm -hmm. that I was a a lady barber, mm -hmm. ruined, and I don't care. Because this is what I do to feed me and my family. This is what I do that makes me happy. Mm -hmm. This is what I do. Um, those relationships didn't last long, and I was okay with that. When it came to the guys in here, mm -hmm. um, I kept it, I kept it small. But I went on some lunch dates. I done went on some dinner dates. We done met at the club. Oh, I have my fun. Mm -hmm. I'm going to. Um, I've earned it. I've been on my feet all day. Yeah. <laughs> so if they wanted to just treat me right, and then that helped um, helped encourage and helped us both, men and women, learn that you don't always have to be having sex or be in a relationship to like someone, to have conversation, to be, you know, involved with each other. And so I learned that growing up. I mean, think about it. When you're 17 starting out, I'm boy crazy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they see this young, you know, cute little lady running around here in her girly heels. And that's why my knees are bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're wearing heels, trying to be so cute. But that's what made me feel good. And they respected it. It was never, um, how many you in here, you know, you in here yeah. doing everybody or even treating me like that's what I was doing. It never mm -hmm. happened. And, and what's nice about that is that the relationships that we've created with these men that we work with, um, it's it's taught us it's that, that exact thing yeah. you don't have to like sex is not even an yeah. option but it's it's um having that that just companionship yeah. and that 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 friendship you yeah. know like i i love uh i love mike's wife i love jared's wife yeah. i love the guys when they have their girlfriends oh, i yeah. love them too and and it's just like welcome to the family and they love you, know? you. and they yeah. love you the wives are you very know? open to you being here mm -hmm. they're secure mm -hmm. they're comfortable yep. And they know that this is what you do. Mm -hmm. um, I never had an issue. I didn't either. Ever. It, it's no. such a different world, mm -hmm. barbering. Mm -hmm. um, very different from working in a salon. Uh, I think, I personally think it's the mixture of the estrogen and the testosterone. Yeah. You know, and it's a balance. Mm, it is. You know. Any more, like, I mean, I could, you know, like, uh, 
Mike's cousin Shelly worked in here. Mm -hmm. uh, she was the only other female I worked with in here. It was a perfect match. And that's only because that was his cousin. Yeah, and that was a perfect match. But it, any, it had any been more, anybody else? <laughs> it, I think it could have been an issue. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is a shop, and I, I, mm -hmm. I feel this way, always have. This is a shop literally made for that type of mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. One woman. Mm -hmm. That's just how I feel. And mm -hmm. those men. Mm -hmm. It can't be too many. Mm -hmm. We've tried it. I wasn't going for it, me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you was going for it. <laughs> I wasn't. It's yeah, like, I no, mean, if you is... came back, I'd be cool with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we, yeah, we, we compatible. We, we, you know what we, I mean? We so... mix. But mm -hmm. no, um, when it was other, um, I had one other woman that I connected with so well. Her name is Shannon. Mm -hmm. um, her, my son's father, I met him here, my 15-year-old's uh, father, um, and two other ladies. They had just graduated from Emily Griffith, mm -hmm. and those two other ladies, mm -hmm. no, the the uh, Shannon, me and her, she she, I love her till this day. We are friends till this day. She's a lady barber. She she's like us. Mm -hmm. um, it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. You have to have a certain mindset, and it's not something that we're saying. It's not a rule we're making. Mm -hmm. It's the rule that this environment creates. If you're messy, if you're immature and childish, mm -hmm. if you're if you're what we know of women to kind of be, late girls to kind of be, you're not gonna make it in here because mm -hmm. they're not going for it. Mm -mm. And nine times out of ten, the woman that you're coming in there to join, she's not going for it. And and you know, let's be honest. If if you have a whole house full of men, of course they're gonna stare at you. Yeah. And, and certain, try to talk to you. And certain <laughs> women can't deal with that. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to right away go to HR. I mean, well, we don't got one. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you quit. So you have to be strong enough to hold you your do. own and, you know, have to know how to deal with men yeah. in a positive way to where you don't make them feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. for coming back here mm -hmm. either. You know, I, I'm real protective over my brothers too, mm -hmm. as you are, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I'll be damned. I'll beat your ass if you try to, you know, say, that, oh, well, he look at me funny. Uh-uh. You know and, what I mean? And, like you, you're not and you may here. feel uncomfortable. You may feel uncomfortable because they, they're a lot better now. Mm -hmm. You you remember they're back? When, you remember back when I started? <laughs> I used to listen to them bark, and I just yeah. be like, "Wow!" and shake my head. But honestly, a lot of my associate female associates would come up here for that. They know this is where the men were. So oh, there's girls that come yeah. in here now. You know, uh, just dressed a certain cute. type of yes. way, you know, just to get it. Yeah, you know, so, so you like it. Mm -hmm. And you just have to know how to handle yourself. That's mm -hmm. what it's all about. That's mm -hmm. what they taught me. Learn how to handle yourself because you can't always control your environment, mm -hmm. who's in it and who's not. Right. You learn how to handle yourself and everything will go smoothly. And to this day, that is my rule of thumb, mm -hmm. self-respect, mm -hmm. self-understanding, self-awareness. And when you, when you allow those things to mature within you, mm -hmm. you could be, you could place yourself anywhere. I could be anywhere. And I mean anywhere. So um, let's talk about, since we're talking about self-awareness and stuff like that, um, let's talk about what it was like behind the chair and what you're doing now, because right now you're in mental health. Is that right? Yes. And then uh, what do you usually do in, in the career that you're in right now? Um, still, uh, with it's, it's the same job without the clippers is okay. what I say. I okay. just don't have the clippers in my hand. Still a companion. Okay. Still still a ear. Mm -hmm. Um someone to talk to. Someone not judging. Someone that is willing to understand you. Um we as I was saying in the beginning about the or earlier about the barbering part of uh, the barber pole and being surgeons we are mental health doctors mm -hmm. if you've seen someone's life change over they used to do those makeovers on those talk shows mm -hmm. and the first thing they would do is their hair and their makeup yeah that starts the change yeah that's true you never know what a person's going through and i've had people tell me i'm so glad you took me today i knew you would probably be tired i knew it was late mm -hmm. but you took me and i just been going through so much and I look so good now. Now I can go through it. Mm -hmm. So I even adopted the model. Like, I can go through anything as long as my hair is right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and it really makes a difference. Some people understand that. Some people don't. Oh, that's vain. That's vanity. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. A it's lot of times, 
It definitely is self-care. And a lot of times when you can look at yourself and then look at what you're dealing with and you still see that you look more alive than you feel, mm -hmm. you can kind of make it and you, you feel the hope. Not only do you see it or you hear people saying, just keep the hope, you know, mm -hmm. keep going. You can feel it. And a haircut or a hairstyle will change a life. It can definitely change a mindset. I I live by it. Well, you know, we, I, we hear a lot of stuff about um, mental health and people of color. Mm -hmm. Being in the chair and being able to make them feel good about themselves, helping them their self-esteem and their confidence. Mm -hmm. You can see it the minute you're done with it. They're like, oh, they're feeling themselves now. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, they walk out mm -hmm. and they're like, yep, shoulders that's go right. Up, that neck you goes know? straight. It's so important. <laughs> yeah. You know, we go through, we, we share so much. We give them their first haircut yeah. and we give them their last yes. haircut, you know, which is yes. sad for us when we see our clients yes. pass away, you yes. know? Um, but uh, throughout that period, you know, uh, they're, they're sending families and friends and their their yep. their groups to yep. us, you know, and yep. we get to really know these people in the community. And um, like you said, you know, you're going to die with a lot of secrets, yes. you know, yes. <laughs> and yes. so will yes. I. But we've had just, I mean, it's just so amazing that we've had the opportunity to to encourage them, inspire them, mm -hmm. you know, uh, motivate them, support them and every, everything that they've done in their life, you yeah. know. We're there for every special occasion that they've ever had. Mm -hmm. And like you say, you know, when they come in and they're not feeling so so good about whatever's going on in their life, we get to, we were a part of that too, you yeah. know? And um, so now that you're in, in, you're in mental health, you know, um, you still feel like that's a rewarding yes. uh, aspect of your life. Yes. And it, it goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Yes, it mm -hmm. is. Um, it, it has allowed me to tap into my my being mm -hmm. and my purpose. Mm -hmm. If I have another purpose, I I don't know that I even want that one. <laughs> right. Um, I've been doing it and it's been such a natural thing. I haven't had to try. Um, I don't try to be kind. I don't try to be a good listener. I don't mm -hmm. try to help people. I do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying it's always correct. Mm -hmm. um, but when you think about the crown, it's our glory. Mm -hmm. It's from your head to your toe. If you don't have feet, you can't walk. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a head, you don't exist. Mm -hmm. We are touching that most intimate, precious part of someone. When you're doing that and you're relieving that pressure, not only are you through your energy transference from you to them, but they're them to you. Mm -hmm. I believe it's such a blessing that our creator has put us in such a position, nothing like what our creator does, mm -hmm. but to the extent of being a helper of that, being that extended hand mm -hmm. um, to really help people relieve pressure mm -hmm. that has built up, that comes up from their feet to their head. And just that haircut, you literally, you can cut that off. And you feel, you've heard people say, I'm sure, mm -hmm. wow, I feel so much lighter. Mm -hmm. It's true because of all these things we carry around from the racism, mm -hmm. from trauma, from uh, anything happening just that day. Just, you know, it, it doesn't matter what it is we're relieving. We're relieving it. And we need to know that. Mm -hmm. um, so... I can't say that I had my, my inner self so much together then to even understand that and even know what I was taking home. Mm -hmm. I'm taking this energy home. I'm taking this energy into my world. Um, I'm obviously created for that. Mm -hmm. I'm not always willing, you know, because I, I have my life too and I have my things going on, but I've never been rejective to it. Mm -hmm. I've never not woken up and said, hey, I'm not going to work to listen to these people's problems. I might say I'm not going to work today because I just don't feel like it. But I never said it to put it out there for others not to be able to confide in me and come and get what they need. I'm here because I have something to sow and I need to be there for that. Um, we've saved lives. Mm -hmm. We have saved some lives, whether we know it or not. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I have a text message in my phone I would have liked to get, 
gotten it in to, to read it um, from one of my clients and she I had did this haircut for her two or three months before she passed away mm. of course neither one of us would know that um, I had just cut her hair the day this thing happened mm -hmm. and was calling her to set another appointment but that's how I found out she was gone mm. um, and she was just like you help me level up you know you this haircut is so fly and it's Aww. so different and oh my gosh I love it thank you Nikki you're a lifesaver you know mm -hmm. and I, I just smiled you know I'm all smiles about that yeah. you know and then I found out you know what had happened to her and I, I read that text message sometimes to remind myself because we are givers mm -hmm. and we give so much of ourselves. Yeah, it's a haircut. Yeah, it's a hairstyle. Mm -hmm. But we're giving life. Mm -hmm. We're taking from ourselves to give to someone else no matter, you know, what it is they're going through. And when I read that text message, it helps me stay connected to my purpose on why I'm doing this and that I'm supposed to be. So I'll never feel like it's a burden. Nobody that comes to me and wants to use my ear to this day. Now I'm in mental health. I'm a, I'm what's called a peer supporter. And I literally support people that have either mental disabilities, physical disabilities, you know, whatever they're going through, whatever they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, it's just that job without the clippers. Um, and to be that type of person that people can feel that comfortable around. It makes me feel good as a person. I'm giving something that you can't buy. Mm -hmm. I'm giving something that you can't sell. You know? So, and I mean, so it, are you. It takes a special person to deal with mental health anyway. Oh, yeah. You know? Like, I don't feel like I'm dealing with mental health here. But, but, it, but I am. <laughs> but, like, those that have been, like, you know, like, uh, medically diagnosed, you know, that have severe medical, mental problems. Mm -hmm. It takes special people, you know. So I mean, I feel like regardless of what level you're at in in the in the in the mental mm -hmm. health um, uh, field, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you're a special person, you know, and, you. and it's definitely needed, you Thank know. You. And and look where it came from. Yes, you know, it definitely came from this. Had I not been a barber, I wouldn't. To to be honest about it, um, my years of being a barber was the experience I was able to use on my application to get this position. Wow. Yes. I I, I, I did a little bit of psychology, mm -hmm. like maybe a semester. Yeah. And that was it. I was like, I, and I literally, and this was literally before all of this took place. I was like, uh, I don't think I want to know. I, I know enough. Yeah. I don't want to be all in people's mix like that and, uh -huh. you know, carry all that with me. I think that's when I start coming into the realization of, I am carrying people's stuff with me, mm -hmm. you know, we, that's what we're doing. Um, and then we go home to our lives and we got our kids, our nieces, our nephews, our mothers, our sisters, our cousins, we're carrying a lot. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I want it. And it's obviously where I'm supposed to be. I can't fight it anymore. So I don't. Go with it. <laughs> I'll just go with the flow. I would just like, like to say, um, since we're sitting here talking so much about these guys that we work with and our brothers and stuff, um, um, I would just like to thank them for yeah. being so genuine to, to us. Yes. And um, thank you, Mike, for, you know, doing what you do to keep this, this place running and to Amen. keep the door open, Amen. to giving people chances. You know, I'll tell you one thing about Mike that uh, happened, while, you know, over the last seven years. He was cutting a he was just cutting a client and it was in the summertime and a blind man was you know had his cane and was walking uh in front of the window and and uh was getting ready to cross the street mike put his clippers down he says i'll be right back he went outside and escorted that mm -hmm. man to 7-eleven like through two lights that you is know? Mike. That and then walks mike. back and starts cutting again and i'm just like that's what mike. The hell? <laughs> that is mike what a man that you is mike I mean? yes i mean this yes. man is is just blows my he's mind so every day. much more than what the eye sees well you know and he also you know i, I learned so much from him not mm -hmm. only how to be a, a strong genuine like very humble person yes but um he's a good husband yeah he's a good um he's a good teacher mm -hmm. he's a good friend mm -hmm. he's he's a good um community leader yes i mean yes wow yeah you know what i mean 
Yes. And then, you know, my other brothers, too, you know, like Jared, he's an excellent husband. Yes. He's an excellent friend. Mm -hmm. He's an excellent, you, you know, family member. I'm just like, you know, yeah. and business. They all, they're all good businessmen, yeah. too. It's just like, yeah. Wow, yeah. you know, and, and those are those are the, what you are witnessing has always been. It's just better now. Mm -hmm. It's more focused. It's more. It's serious, mm -hmm. and that is definitely in in this manner my attraction. Mm -hmm. If I were to say I would like to model who I would want to marry or be with sure. after these guys. Mm -hmm. I've, I've compared so many people to them and not mm -hmm. because I wanted to be with them, sure. but because of the things that they show the me a man should be, yep. could be. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, it's not, it wasn't so much um, to get them or someone like them. Mm -hmm. It was these, this is what you need to look at in yourself and look at in them so that you can see your compatibility and so that you can see that you're not being taken for a ride. Mm -hmm. We're giving you this. Mm -hmm. And for them to still have it. <laughs> and if you're going to date me, you got to get along with all my yeah. brothers. because yeah. and, you have, and you have to family. understand I love them. Mm -hmm. Don't try to come in between that because mm -hmm. of what your insecurities make you feel like. Mm -hmm. I literally love these guys. And I believe me, I've had people, I don't want you going down there. And it's like, you just, you don't understand the dynamics. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. I can't make you. Um, you could see us together, mm -hmm. you know, or you could go talk to them about me and see what you find out. That mm -hmm. would probably help a lot of these guys I've dated if they mm -hmm. would have came and mm -hmm. asked a few questions. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, they might get beat up, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, you know, and maybe <laughs> not because, you know, yeah. I will <laughs> say as rough and tough as these guys are, you know, where they came from, the straight hood dudes. Um, but they don't even, they don't come at situations like that. Mm -hmm. They don't do that unless it's necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, so they probably more or less would have gave you the jewels that they gave us, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but no one was ever really going to take that, that chance, right. were they? <laughs> we can't expect that. It would be helpful. Right. Um, but, you know, all in all for them, they are definitely um, outstanding men mm -hmm. to know. And each one of them in their own way have something to offer. And Mike... The man that he is, the man that he has showed me and what I've seen him come from is, it's just beautiful. You know, um, the fact that the biggest thing, my biggest thing about Mike that I love is that he will give you a chance. He's mm -hmm. not going to do it for you. Right. He, he's even going to tell you a little bit how to do it. Mm -hmm. You just need to watch and pay attention. If you want it, you'll pick it up. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the bottom line. There's no puzzle with that there's no wondering you just that's what it is and he's so straightforward about it mm -hmm. so yeah the humbleness um just all the good stuff all the nurturing good healthy mm -hmm. food they gave us mm -hmm. to eat <laughs> i know and you know even with the young ones that we have in here now yeah they i mean they they're just as special as the as the older yeah. ones you know the only reason we're talking so much about mike jared and the ex is because we have more common yeah relationship with yeah. them but um the young ones too they 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 teach me so much and and, and add so much positivity to That's my good. life and i'll tell you what um there's, there's days where in the in, you know in the recent past where i may not have been having such a good day and usually i'm always upbeat and positive uh -huh. you know but sometimes i just need to be in their presence yes you know just being yeah. in their energy yeah i like wow i feel good i feel mm -hmm. better you know mm -hmm. it's just like mm -hmm. that extra boost mm -hmm. of yes man confidence yes, that, you know it's just, yes and even so, to this day after all those years i have i've um acquired my own shop mm -hmm. i had it for nine years mm -hmm. um because of mike's influence um and he was very proud of me but he is very proud of me um just Sometimes I'm I'm going through it. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm dealing with the most, and I'm like, you know, I need to go figure out. And I'm I'm gonna say this because it's it comes from endearment in my heart. I need to go around with my real niggas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. what I need in my life. Yeah, I am not used to. I, I've eliminated a lot of falseness, mm -hmm. and so when I need that grounding, it's like your your phone plug. I need to plug in, and so I'll come up here and I'll plug in. Mm -hmm. Get all my love, all my hugs, you know, mm -hmm. all the laughs. Might mess around and get a lunch off in there. Exactly. If, you know, it's it's just been love, growth, and, and healthiness mm -hmm. 
and and I'm grateful that you know my creator thought enough of me to put me in this situation oh, to I'm put so me blessed. in this place. Yep, I think we all have been blessed. Yeah, especially them. I know, right? <laughs> With our presence, right? Because right? you can't now the two women <laughs> that they have created, right? You can't find that anywhere. No, in fact, you know, just it's crazy. so y'all know, you're and not gonna find that's that anywhere. Right. <laughs> and for all of you available men out there, we got the game. The game. They taught us everything. The game. The game. <laughs> and we, we actually, the you and I, I can't speak for anybody else out there, but you and I, we have an advantage over every woman yes. in the city yes, because of where we work. Yes, ma'am. You know, because we know the ins and the outs of, yes, of how men think yes, and how they deal with us. Yes, ma'am. So I didn't learn it soon enough. I, I kind of learned it later in the game, but, yeah. but thank you for that yeah. because, you yeah. know, and I mean, you... You came in right when you needed to come in. Yes, ma'am. You know? Yes, ma'am. So, but it ain't too late for me either. It ain't too late for you. <laughs> it's never too late. Uh -uh, no. <laughs> it's never well, too late. Well, Nikki, um, I'm so happy to have you on. I, I, you. I went a long time without really knowing who you were for Thank a while, you. but I'm glad that I was blessed to meet you and I'm stuff. Glad and same. See where Shelly Martinez uh, yes. got the torch from. Yeah, I, I know, know that's right. Shoot. But, uh, <laughs> You guys, uh, stay tuned because uh, we'll have Nikki on in the future and we'll talk about some other stuff. So I would love to have you back. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for listening. <laughs> this room over here where we come from. That's right. And and shout out to Roddy. Yeah, Roddy that's Curtis. right. That's right. One of the originals, yes. huh? Yes. All right. All right, Good Denver. Night.